Hello guys, girls and everything else. This is another Cargo Pants video. This time about Pathfinder 2nd Edition's character creation. Um, so yeah, we are going to create a completely new character. So, essentially, right now it is time to check. First, our ABCs, okay? Ancestry, background, background and class. Um, if you, for first, your ancestry. Mm, for now, we will check common ones. For now, we will just check common ones. There are two types of ancestries that are strictly beneficial and there are trade of ancestries. For example, over here, we have human that should be of the beneficial an uh, example of beneficial ancestries, but is not really a good example of that. Um, so instead of that, I will show you an uncommon ancestry that is also in player's handbook. I mean, a core rule book. Oh no, that that's advanced players, right? Sorry, my my brain just died. Um, which is orc. This is a beneficial ancestry, which allows you to give, which gives you a boost to one specific thing, and gives you one free choice. And the ones that I prefer more, which are trade of ancestries, which are like dwarf they give you two ability improvements and one free one but also give you a minus to one of things for now we group abilities into three sections first into two sections first are physical ones aka strength dexterity constitution and mental ones, aka intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. You know, strength, essentially how much can you lift, how strong you are. Um, dexterity is all of your reflexes, all of the agility based stuff, except speed. Um, and constitution is your endurance, basically. How much can you endure um, how strong is your immune system and how much stamina do you have and intelligence and by stamina I mean technically also like be um, like being able to do stuff for extended periods of time but also by that I mean hit points and mental intelligence is basically your memory aka how how much can you remember and how much do you know, which gives you proficiencies in skills. Wisdom is your... Wisdom is basically your instincts. Like your will to live and all of the stuff like that. And charisma is all of your social stuff, you know. And also your, your force of personality. Uh, which symbolizes the, the fact that whenever you get innate spells, aka okay, spells from your ancestry, they are always used with charisma, unless you are a psychic and you chose a specific feat that says that you can use it with intelligence. So yeah. Let's, ac let's just accept us to be a dwarf. Maybe. Let me save it to local for them. Well, now let's say background of our character. Okay, what your character did before. You don't need to look through all of this, but all you really need to do is... Okay, so... I need a background that contributes to one of the abilities I will probably use as a Magus which are usually Wisdom, Intelligence, Constitution, Dexterity, and Strength. 
I will... I'm going to decide that I will play probably like... A dexterity based Magus maybe. Or maybe I don't want to play a dwarf. And I want to play something that increases my intelligence. Um, or gives me more strength. And I want to, for example, dump maybe wisdom except for strength. Oh no. Maybe I will just leave it at that. And now our background. I want a background that increases my intelligence, let's say. And check everything. For example, oh. Let's say, um. Hermit, maybe. Let's say that this guy, or oh, maybe magical misfit. Yeah, you don't feel. Um, which will allow you to trick magic ultimate and stuff like that. And right now, because we are. Let's say that our dwarf was really unable. Had a problem, for example, with grasping magic. That's what magical misfit may mean. So the dwarf. Maybe it was from a clan of like um, wizards. And the dwarf decided, okay, I have got enough of this. I will also pick up a weapon and fight like that. Like a true Giga Chat. And decided to become, for example, a Magus. Because Magus will show us um, all of the stuff from both Martians and spellcasters. Then we choose our abilities. Right now I want this guy to be strength based, so strength to everything. And... Hmm. Oh no, not strength based. Dexterity based, instead of that. Uh, so yeah, let's leave it not that by giving it constitution, so... Dexterity, intelligence, constitution and wisdom. See, so you have 18, 18, 3 14, 10 and a minus 1, which is probably the best thing, the best um, stat array you can have, unless you have an amnesic background. But, okay. Over here you have your spell strike feature you can use for a bunch of actions. Then you're gonna pick your skill training, aka choose all of the skills. Acrobatics, all of the stuff about all of the acrobatic stuff, like squeezing and stuff like that, arcana is general magical knowledge, athletics, and strong stuff, crafting, making stuff, you know. You can basically read through all of this. And there's also lore that is a specific knowledge about a thing. Um, so yeah, let's say that our dwarf was interested in occult stuff. Yeah, and also was a pretty decent acrobat. And also let's give it strength, strength in like this and thievery. Stuff and thievery. So yeah, finished. And now also one extra because you know. Magical Misfit gives you Arcana, and we already had Arcana, I mean Arcana, Arcana, whatever. Yeah, that may be like the new Tomato Tomato, Arcana Arcana, Arcana Arcana. And let's give it to Crafting, because it's still intelligence based, so it would be cool to give it a Crafting. So yeah, now let's get to Heritage. Over here you have Common Heritage. And common heritages are specific. See, every single one ends with dwarf, which essentially means that it is a specific thing that only dwarves can have. Usually, heritages like that give you ability. Um, give you ability that is essentially worth as much as one bonus feat. 
there are also uncommon heritages, which and rare heritages that any single class can have. And you can just basically mm, select them on any class you want. They usually don't give you anything special. They can give you like low light vision at best unless you are an Ifrit and you have like fire resistance, I think. Yeah, fire resistance. Which gives you both feet and more options. But, sure, let's give us the But let's give us the fourth dwarf for simplicity's sake. Or maybe not. Let's give us beast kid. Let's say that the reason you were unable to do all of the magic stuff was because you were cursed. Cursed with a curse of a beast that lives inside you and sips on and sips on your head. That's why you can't remember all of your spells and stuff like that. Yeah, so now let's give it. So yeah, Adaptive Vision um, is Dwarf. AKA, you can have a Dwarf. It also has Uncommon, which means that, okay, you need to speak to your GM before, you need to speak to your GM before you actually take this feat, but anything that so if something is orange you need to speak to the gm if something is if something is like blue then you need to speak to the gm really really need to speak to the gm and if purple you 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 need to speak to the gm really like um usually respectfully because it's even like a rare thing, but usually if they allow uncommon stuff, they will allow rare stuff. But if something is purple, don't even bother asking your DM. Your DM will specifically give this thing to you. If that DM allows it, your DM will specifically give it to you, don't just ask. Because this is a specific probably historical item that is one of a kind or a creature that is one of a kind. So yeah. Mm. So see you have this feed that gives you stuff like this and also quick shape that you get biskin trait aka you have beast stuff that allows you to turn into your beast form whenever you roll initiative. Let's say you can s see this because you're for example an owl beast. Yeah you're an owl partially. And since you already have dark vision and stuff like that, I think that quick shape could be pretty good for you. Maybe pet form. I think that that's what it's called. Quitter shape. But, but you can turn into something that flies, so let's give it just that. And Hybrid Study, aka your subclass. Indexable Iron helps you with big weapons that are basically two-handed. See, like great weapons, great axe, great sword, or a pole arm, which are the best ones, in my opinion. You should definitely use like a if you're playing a strength based character, you should definitely pick up a Hellbard. Don't even ask questions. You should you should pick a Hellbard. That, that that's all I'm saying. Not because it's better necessarily normally, but like in the game, but it's better just but it, it's way cooler. It's way cooler than a sword. Sword is just an oversized knife. Laughing Shadow which allows you to do a lot of stuff like Rogue. Over here, you are essentially like a champion. You are essentially like a mix of like a fighter maybe or champion. 
with that um, with wizard over here you are a mix of rogue and wizard with fucking touch you are a me you are actually a mix of champion and wizard Star with Pan, you are a mix of like a ranger and wizard. And with Twisting Tree, you are you are actually like a mix of a druid and a wizard. So Starlit Span or Laughing Shadow should be cool. But since you are an owl and you will probably fly because of that. Let's give it Starlit Span so you can so you can shoot while flying. And you have essentially your level 1 character. Usually for most of... Usually I wouldn't explain it so it would take way less. Um, and it took us only like 15 minutes to build a level 1, level one character. Almost. And already, you know, it didn't take really long so let's give him some name. Dwar... Name generator. Dwarf name generator. See. And Let's see, since it's an owl, there are, I think, like, um, um, snow owl, yeah, there's, like, snow owls, so let's take Numizok Ice Cloak, and let's say that it was, like, an he was in like an ice based region, and that's why he's called like that. So yeah, weapon. Um, first pick your weapon, you usually have 15 gold at start, but your GM probably will give you more. We have both simple and martial weapons, see, T aka training, aka we'll, our proficiency will be equal to 2 plus level And we will also to our attack bonus at dexterity. So 2 plus level plus dex. Or 2 plus level plus strength it, if it's a weapon that uses strength. Um, so yeah. Martial. Also say because we are Magus but not advanced. Over here you will just add your dexterity to advanced weapons. So let's check um, these weapons. And let's filter them because we want to ch see a ranged weapon. Let's filter ranged weapon. Lona deal a decent amount of damage. So let's say. Hmm. Harmon again. Starry Span works with both, I think, just. So for simplicity's sake, just take both. So, a short bow and long bow has volley. So, let's pick up a short bow, I think. That's all we, we, we probably need to do. So, yeah. Buy and accept. And now we have our short bow that we will use for our all the damage shenanigans that we have plus 7 to hit. Oh, though our second attack, if we attack for the second time in a turn, it will only deal plus 2 unless we have a specific thing. And then next one will attack at minus 3. So, defense. We'll probably just get, I don't know, like a leather armor because we have plus four and every armor that is not heavy, which, you know, we, we don't have proficiency in heavy armor, 
mm, get like um, five max ex AC. Okay, AC bonus is one. Okay, it gives us plus one AC and Dex cap four. Okay, it can allow us to only have four extra um, dexterity. Um, so yeah, for now this seems like a good deal. Until like level 10 I think Then you can just put it on your normal defense and we have and remember we have speed of 20 feet so we can like move 20 feet we have size medium So all of that stuff that will I will explain in later episodes and Gear you can buy yourself items that you have that you want for items health items Let's give this dude a raven bone. Yeah, let's buy a raven bone also. And probably some arrows, but you know, GMs don't usually put restrictions on arrows, but in case, then you can buy arrows. Yeah, one silver piece for 10 arrows. Um, so yeah, let's find arrows yet again. And I think that buying... Oh no, I accidentally gave it to myself, so... Minus one set. But let's essentially give like ourselves 40 arrows and... Right now and subtract like two silver. And now we have our character, pretty much. Over here you have saving throws, fortitude against diseases, and all of the stuff that would weaken your body reflex against stuff that would just like hit you like explosions and stuff like that. While well, fortitude is mostly about stuff that would weaken you from inside. And will is about the things that would attack your mind. Or soul. And now spells, because this is, you usually, most classes get like 5 cantrips. So yeah, let's see, do we have like, mm, Ray of Frost. We should learn that, see, accept that, you, you should learn a bunch of spells at the very start. Like this, Dancing Lights, Electric Arc, Mage Hand, and maybe Prestidigitation. And let's say Prestidigitation, Mage Hand, Electric Arc, and Dancing Lights. Why not Chill Touch? Because Chill Touch is like the death thing. And we have one spell at level 1, which... Let's say our GM allowed us to learn this spell that... Let's see trade, because this guy is an Ice Owl guy. Ice Owl Werewolf. So probably let's... Evocation that has... Let's see trade this time. That has... Cold trade. A Snowball and Chaining Spray. This one has reflex and this one has attack roll. So essentially, now with Magus' spell strike feature, it works like that that we can combine a spell for two actions and attack for one action into um, one burst and we use our attack modifier instead of spell modifier. But it only works on stuff like this, so... We have learned snowball and accept. Over here Magus has spells, so... When we pick Snowball, we can change it the next day, but you know, we, if we pick Snowball, we can only use Snowball in the spell slot. If we cast this, then we don't have a spell slot anymore, and if you want to cast something else too bad, you only can cast Snowball out of your spells right now. Unless, there are also other spellcasters. 
that are called that are called spontaneous spellcasters that have way less spells don't have stuff like don't have the an entire list available every day they just have like maximum of three day spells learned every day of three sp spells at once that they can that they can't change even mm. and yeah but they can cast them um, whenever they want with their spell slots. They can even choose a signature spell that they will be able to um, cast using higher spell slots to get a greater effect. Without learning it at higher level. Focus spells. We have shooting stars. These deplete focus points. You use a focus point, then after the battle you probably have a break. If your break lasts at least 10 minutes, then I don't know, you probably do your Magus Ungabunga, aka, you know. You probably just start aiming your bow at random, at random stuff to just check your aim. And because also you are technically a wizard partially, you will probably repeat phrases like Rhinoceros Beetle, Rhinoceros Beetle, Rhinoceros Beetle, Rhinoceros Beetle. And when you do that with your bow, and then, well, after 10 minutes of doing that stupid stuff and embarrassing yourself in front of your party, that will probably also have another character that is a mage and will embarrass themselves for just repeating a rhinoceros beetle and without doing, without aiming the bow or aiming the bow or just randomly aiming the bow at things. Or if this is a cleric, just like um doing your christian songs or something or maybe like nordic songs or something or if you're a bard and um, probably just like um getting aroused by you reading about like um, your muse or something and then well you gain your focus points back over here at level 12 most classes gain the ability for example um uh, to get a focus that allows you to have two focus points um, and with, and gain two focus points instead of one all of the stuff like that so yeah um, the easy part that's pretty easy like that far with all of the explaining it lasted only like 30 minutes or so but most of the character you will do, you will probably just make it up and just like make it in 10 minutes or so because there won't be like an idiot explaining it to you. Oh yeah, for, also for defense, let's just say that this guy bought a buckler. Bucklers are like shields. You can use a, race, a shield action to give yourself plus one to AC. But bucklers do not take up your hand but in turn, they have way less HP in case you will try to use shield block. And also, bucklers um, give you plus 1 to AC, while normal shields give you plus 2 to AC when you raise them. And let's say because up to like every... Because it will be important up to like... Um, level 5... Um, so yeah, this is an even level. This is an even level. Even level past one, like um, give you one class fit and one skill fit, while all levels give you um, a skill increase and then general fit or ancestry fit. So let's check this one and let's pick something that will help us with the whole thing or let's say expensive mm, spell strike mm -hmm. Yes, so now we can use the other spell that we used, if we choose this one at level 2, we can... Um, let's get back to spells. 
and over here, you know, that one disappeared. So normally it wouldn't disappear, because normally with full casters you still have your spell slot, but this is a Magus, it's a hybrid caster. Hybrid casters works like, work like that, that you have maximum of 4 spell slots. And if you have like 2 spell slots of level 2, um, then um, your 2 spell slots of level 1 will disappear and you will get a spell slot of level 3. That's why Magus is great to explain stuff. So plus 1 heighten and let's give us the snowball that we had and probably also um, snowball and the other one that was called with let's say traits which is called which is chilling spray see we can use both of these right now and now at this one let's say that just in case let's use the best spell ever have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Lightning Bolt. And Lightning Bolt is like a very good spell that deals damage in a line. But also for all of you like um, fans, DD nerds, also let's get one Fireball that deals just 6d6, which is average of like 4 times. The three and a half times six, which is uh, the same as twenty one, about probably average damage when our deals like six and a half, which is six and a half times two, um, which is about like uh, seven again, and that's fourteen damage. So I mean that's not that's not really s okay. So let 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 me explain. Okay. D Wait, uh, I got my. Uh, it messed up. Uh, just let let me use our calculator. And which average damage plus also resistance stuff, which is three and a half times six, which is average damage twenty one. Yes, over here we have four. And over here we have like four, um, four times um, that's six and a half, which is twenty six. Yeah, this, sorry, I just like um, accidentally divided it by two. T too much thought process going on at once. So yeah, it, it deals like more damage on average. And lightning is uh, and electricity is a better type of damage, so that's why I think that it's the best spell. Um, but you know, th this one gives like 30 foot boards, and like you can throw it from f like, like, see, like 500 feet, which is like literally it's like 150 meters or something. You can throw it from like a block away. And over here. And it deals like 20 foot burst. So it's. It occupies I think like. 40 by 40. Which this one just occupies like. 120 by 5. So. Fireball is better for like. Going against a group of enemies. While lightning bolt is better for like. Um, singular enemies and stuff like that, which you know, all of bosses are singular enemies, and my GMs tend to give our bosses, um, you know, tend to give our bosses um, a little thing that is called um, low reflex, which is with both guys over here, but you know, low. On lower reflex against a boss, then lightning bolt is way better. See, like both spells are technically equal, but um, I just prefer lightning bolt, you know. Yeah. 
And yeah, technically, um, one fun fun thing that our GM allows it's like hundred foot, um, like um, this one. It's hundred twenty foot line, which is hundred and twenty foot line, which is just hundred and twenty by five, which is over here twenty by twenty. So then we like widen. It's twenty five foot bears, but over here it's like it also increases it like by. I'm sorry my family is trying to like do a fucking backflip or something um, But then some GMs allow it so it actually increases the five On the sides, which is it increases it to the side technically so it should be like 100 by 10 which takes up um, Which also goes to the other side aka it then is um 125, which is instead of like being 120 times 5 and 20 times 5, which is like things. No, that's like 120. Yeah, that, that's like 600 um, square feet, which then it like does 125 um times 15 which probably is just like um <laughs> which occupies you know three times more than three times as much space but you know um you know some gyms gyms won't allow this while some are cool and will which is why i prefer it so yeah let's just check stuff that we can have Catfall is probably the, my favorite feat and we already have Underworld lore which is a specific skill so I don't need to showcase to you by additional lore let's give us um, Catfall which will just essentially help us with acrobatics so let's just double down on acrobatics and increase see right now you can increase acrobatics to expert okay see that allows you to expert and then instead of your bonus being like um, your proficiency bonus instead of being your level plus two like with train rank it will be your level plus four and then at master plus um, six and then plus eight over here you know it still automates everything in path builder but you know you also add to seven like four from your decks so yeah, now general for general fits. Let's let's just pick pick my favorite general fit of all, probably. Which is basically just a fit that I take every time. Over here this time maybe fleet, but that, because we'll be a backline fighter, then probably just. It would be better to gain some mobility, so let's choose fleet. I would pick like toughness if I were like a frontline tank or something. So yeah, over here, um, let's just give it start. I see some things have like start span hybrid study. The thing we chose before, which is a prerequisite, which is you know. Um, studied eyes so that's how it works and then let's just check another skill fit which will be this time maybe nimble crawl because we have now expert in acrobatics which opened the room for picking nimble crawl and another skill increase because it's an odd level and this time, see, we cannot increase this to master. Why? Because we can increase ranks to master only at 7th level and higher, and to legend 15th level and higher. So we need to invest in another skill. So let's also be stealthy. Then we'll probably last through Sakara or something. And then we have, let's add our constitution for more health, wisdom for wisdom stuff. Dexterity over here, see? Normally, like, constitution increase from 14 to 16 by 2. 
and our dexterity increased only to 19. Why? So, yeah. But past the threshold of 18, the dexterity will increase by 1. Which means that by only abilities without apex items, you will probably just have 22 dexterity at the end of the game, at level 20, because you get this ability score improvements every 5 levels. And, um, you know... With Apex items, you can like give one that gives you plus two and give another one that gives you plus two. Um, which will just amount to probably um, not much. So yeah. See over here we have Intelligence, which gives us another skill. Society to cap off all the stuff. Mm, about intelligence and wait it's level 3 so instead of that I will show you another cool feat called untrained improvision well normally we don't add level to stuff we are untrained at we don't have any proficiency ranks so now we check it and mm. Wait, we're level 5, so... Okay, so uh, untrained improvision didn't really work here. Let's reselect the level. Okay, see so that's 7th level. So yeah, um, level 5, back to level 5. So... Yeah, we have minus one, but we have two from proficiency from somewhere. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I forgot. It gives you mostly proficiency equal to half our level right now. But at level seven, it will be our full level. I forgot that one thing about this feat. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Now, ancestry feat. Another ancestry feat because, you know, every second, because every second even level, you know, at the first level we got like the ancestry feat, then we got at third level we got the general feat, then ancestry feat yet again at level 5, then at level 7 again general feat, and then ancestry feat again at level 11. I mean at level 9. Um, so yeah, you can check like other stuff like for example blast resistance maybe maybe no greater animal senses to go farther into beast skin animalistic resistance because you probably want to resist diseases and poisons so you won't probably get caught or something get a cold and yeah now let's go to the fun part also there are optional ca character options um, character options that are usually after my feeds don't care about this right now um, which most uh, game masters I know will allow you to get Game Mastery, free archetype, and also mm, Ancestry Paragon. So yeah, you check that, and what is this? We have more fits right now. Yeah, we have free ar dedication fit or archetype fit over here. So let's check an archer dedication. Because we are a bow, because we are a bow person. And after that, see... Um, Ancestral Paragons gives us more Ancestry feats. Wow! Which over here... Let's say um, Dwarven Lore. To get more skills. Over here you know, would normally get probably Society and Crafting, but... Let's give our character some charm and give it Diplomacy. 
and religion. Oh yeah, the religion. This so we give it diplomacy and religion, and we have another Lord Dwarf and Lore. And now free archetype. Now we can select dedications because, see, we need to select two. As you can see over here, two other feats that we have from our current archetype. So it's a quick shot. Which, let's say, assist shot, maybe, or open, which, okay, let's check out quick shot, maybe, to start off the mm, turn really fast, maybe. Or point blank shot, that will be more strategic. So see, we have more of that and see, you have like an option. It's an action, so it's an option. Over here, archer dedication, of course, like it gives you more balls, usually. Which is just more options to use. And over here, you have point blank shot that allows you to have an option for melee. This is all options. Nothing over here in Pathfinder is a straight up bonus except for your ability score improvements. Um, so yeah, that's how it works. Mm. No rituals, let's say. You can check on a ritual, and these are essentially like things that anyone can do. So as long as you have like um, skills necessary to cast these rituals, which are the magic skills, Mm, okay, Arcana, mm, Occultism, Religion and Nature, then you should be able to use most of these. Also, there will be probably like secondary casters to like, I don't know, like with a giant banner, probably, which will uh, make them use athletics. Um, so yeah, that's the whole guide how to make a character. Over here, in under an hour, we made a level 5 character, which... Oh yeah, I forgot that one, Ancestry Paragon. Um... Let's check Fire Savvy, maybe. Explosive Savvy, no. Adaptive vision, maybe. Over here, we made in under, in under an hour, we made a full five fifth level character, fifth level Magnus. And it only took us so long because we needed to. Oh yeah, also, perception is a very special skill because you automatically gain ranks in perception, just like saving throws. It's because most most of the time, if you fight, you will use perception as an initiative. But for example, if you're trying to like I don't know, jump for initiative, like um, do a backflip, or you're trying to like sneak up on the enemy, then you roll for stealth for initiative. And for example, if you covered yourself in poop or something to hide, then you can roll survival instead of perception. Just roll the stuff that gives you a better bonus and try to find another thing. And try to find an explanation for your GM. For example, you can even say deception because you're doing a sucker punch. Or maybe crafting because you're, for example, I don't know, um, when you roll, you throw like a clock, little clockwork thingy you made. Or you like uh, break a machine to distract your enemy. Um, and then you roll crafting for initiative maybe. Or you jump out of the enemy's window grabbing like um, the enemy's like a curtain. And jump from the window. Um, in front of your enemy. Then you probably roll acrobatics. 
Um, that's all you need to know. Pets. Um, maybe in order to show you pets how they work. I would need to change maybe our arch archer dedication to maybe something better. A beastmaster dedication maybe. Why can't I select Beastmaster Dedication? Oh yeah, Trained in Nature, so... To do that, maybe... At level 2, maybe change our extra from Crafting to Nature. See, it won't really change anything, but now we can select our Beastmaster Dedication. And now we have our Beast which is our pet, um, which has like a bunch of HP depending on our level. X amount of HP per level that we have. Which instead of point blank shot now we have probably maybe mature beast master's companion to upgrade our companion. Which will just give you bonus HP and all of this stuff well now you can play um, for example um, edit your pet because you know you probably like um, made a butter but instead of butter in order to have something that um, fits you you're probably an owl person then you probably want an owl, maybe. An owl, owl, owl. Easy, easy. Mm. We don't have an owl, but... Maybe just risking some other bird as an owl, but I'm really really like mo the idea of a moth, but with this character it doesn't fit, so let's check what is not Triceratops. Terror, terror bird, maybe. Um, is this the one that, yeah. Um. Well, instead of that, maybe just like set them vulture. Yeah, there's no owl, but there's a vulture. Or maybe you can choose an eagle for that, maybe. There's no you. Yeah, just on bear. Yeah, for bear you can... For bear you can check an owl. And over here you have... Your bear that has your jaws... Has a talon. It has the flyby ability later, maybe. See, so... Has this... Has low light vision, size medium, and has this over here support benefit that it gives it. And now over here, you see, you can like change the name of it, like maybe Bear Bear Bertie Bertie Mature Bert. And check later um, for just like architects when you can check at 14th level for a specialized companion, which I will also try to review over here. Um, um, so yeah, level eight, and I will just show you. For a second, um, just to get this to like level 14 for just a second, just to show that to you. 
Now over here you have um, advancement, which is you can see like indomitable. That will have strength more. This one will have ex dexterity and stuff like that. This one have like magic. And let's say this one would be like a nimble owl. And specialization for maybe an ambusher. Which will help it ambush and stuff like that. So yeah, now it has like dex 26 at this point. Level 14. Which um, you can only get with like magic items or so. And that's at level 14. So yeah, and it's still balanced. It's still balanced. So yeah, that, that's why we also made like companions. And also Sierra Magus. And probably... I should also review a familiar. How a familiar works. If you're another familiar... But maybe instead of that, I, w I will make it another video. Okay, guys. I'm kind of tired right now, so I will make it another video. Mm, bye, guys, girls, and everything else.